What's up, everyone? Uh, Perfection here. We're, um, tonight we're going to talk about kill events. Um, you know, there's there's been some confusion in, in, in our kingdom, and I'm sure if it's happening in our kingdom, it's probably happening in other ones. And and uh, and just going to clear up some things about how kill events work and the way to probably optimize the way you handle kill events when they come around. Um, before we get on, I was going to give a couple of shout outs to the people who helped help me come up with some of this information. It's going to be Tails and Casey, Queen Bee, InsideGameAward.com. Uh, give a couple of shout outs to our uh, some of my recent subscribers, uh, Chris, Lags, uh, Morgana, and Omar. So anyway, so what we're going to talk about is kill events, whether it be kingdom versus kingdom, um, free for all kill events, or alliance kill events, they, they pretty much all function the same way um generally it's either one or no points for uh t1 troops hospitalized or or uh killed um t2 give i want to say it's 25 points and then t3 50 points and then t4 would be 100 points and that's for hospitalizer hospitalizing or killing the troops um I could be a little bit off on the uh, T2 and T3 troops there, but um, ideally, the the way the way to maximize the the outcome of the event, or at least on an individual level, is to you want to kill basically as as many T4 troops as possible with the least amount of tr or with the lowest tier troops possible. So. That being said, if if you're, for example, if you're a solo trap account, you pretty much want to maintain nothing but T1 and T3 troops. You really don't want to have any T4 troops. Um, and, and the reason for that is is if, if you get solo attacked by someone sending 375,000 T4 troops without a core, so they're just sending normal, you know, wearing normal gear, sending a full march of troops at you, and... You have enough troops in your base, or in your in your uh, uh, city, you, you're pretty much gonna win the fight as long as your defense or your defensive boosts are, are well enough. You're you're pretty much gonna win the fight. You're gonna kill their troops, probably all of them or a big number of them. Um, while they're only gonna hospitalize, I'd say maybe at best a hundred to two hundred thousand of your T1 troops. In which case you can just instantly restore them. There's no queue time on restoring uh, uh, healing uh, T1 troops, and I don't believe there's any. Yeah, you know, there's no no real cost to it either. Um, one thing to note with that is if they hospitalize 200,000 um, T1 troops at best, if they're given one point, or a lot of times it's zero points for T1 troops, but if it is one of the events that's giving one point for a T1 troop, at, at worst case scenario, you lose uh, two, 200 and 200,000 ish points, and let's say you kill their entire march, you're going to gain 37. 0.5 million uh, points. So that being said, that works on the opposite side too. When you're attacking people, you don't necessarily have to send, you know, a full rally of T4 troops against a trap that's only holding T2 and T3 troops, you know, or even T1 troops. You uh, you can send a rally of T2 or a rally of T3. Um, you know, if you're wearing cores, you're going to outperform them. And and something else to note on that is, is uh, if you're if you're attacking, let's say a basically what anybody you're attacking, if if you can get a scout off on them or um, if you can basically find out what type of troops they're holding. So let's say you send an attack at them, and while you're sending that attack, while it's marching, go ahead and start spamming scout on them. So they're eventually going to turn on boosts. 
and when they do it's going to drop their anti-scout and you're going to see what they have now if you notice hey this person's only got t2 t3 troops you only want to send exactly what they have or lower as far as your tier you don't you don't want to send t4 troops at someone that's their highest tier troop they have is tier 3 because yes you're probably going to win the fight but they're going to win in points it's not about just burning people because yeah you may burn them you know you may destroy you know let's say two three million power of theirs but if they destroy if they kill you know 10 million power of your t4 troops well you lost technically when it comes to a kill event because you gave them more points you, you lost points for your kingdom and their uh, kingdom gained points so you always want basically you never want to send anything that's going to risk giving them more points than you can win um, that being said if you're if you're going to zero somebody you know and they're holding let's say three million t1 troops five million t3 troops and two million t4 troops start off with the lower tier troops that way yes you're going to lose troops a lot that way you're going to lose a lot of troops that way but you're going to gain points that way so really if you can't if you don't have enough troops to sacrifice that then, then there's no sense in even attacking them um another another big big thing is if you cannot take a solo hit period i mean i mean if you cannot take a solo t4 hit then you should never log off or go away from the game unshielded regardless if you're holding heroes or not because someone's just going to come along and solo you now the difference is is let's say you can take a solo hit but not a rally well what what i do is is i actually you know plug the headphones port of my tablet into my stereo and I crank the volume all the way up and I have alerts set on for when for when I'm getting hit I turn on uh, I go into the option or notifications here and I turn on world map notifications which basically if you get attacked scouted um, or Alliance War you turn that on too and uh, if someone starts a rally against you or, or your alliance, it, you know it'll send that alert to your to your device. And if you got that volume cranked up loud enough, it'll <laughs> it'll wake you up for sure. Um, it may piss off everybody else in the house, but hey, it'll wake it'll at least wake you up so you can, you know, shield up or defend yourself if you need to. Um, if you're not that serious into it, where you don't want the game waking you up, my honest opinion is is just go ahead and put up a shield. You know, it's not worth holding on to a hero if you're gonna you know get zeroed overnight and and feed up a bunch of points um so so shields are a big deal you know anti scouts are a big deal and any type of a kill event basically the less information you can that the enemy can get from you the better off you're going to be um a lot of people know this but if you are newer and you just don't know this you know you go into your alliance you can go to your alliance store and I spent all my loyalty points, but uh, you can go in here and pick up. I mean, pretty much every alliance that I've ever heard of is going to keep eight-hour P shields in the uh, in the uh, alliance store, and and you just go pick one up, or at least always try to have you know a few of them on you if you need. If, if there's a rally coming at you, yeah, it's a, there's a lot of times where you think yeah I can take this rally, but. In reality, you you also have to think of yeah. Can you you can take the rally, but even if even if they don't, even if you win the rally, are they going to destroy more power of yours than you're going to destroy of their wave that they're sending at you? If if you can take the rally, cool. But if you're going to lose in po in power, if you're going to lose more power than they're going to lose, just go ahead and pop the shield. I mean, th there's no pride issue there. The pride issue is when your kingdom loses. And you know everybody's frustrated because you lost. Or if you're getting rallied, go ahead. You know, keep some uh, some teleports on you, some advanced teleports or random teleports. You know, nine times out of ten, if you're getting rallied and you pop a random teleport, they're gonna cancel the rally. You go back, you help out your 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 alliance, you help out your kingdom. Um, 
uh, a lot of kingdoms are good about this. Ours is pretty good about this as well. Um, uh, you know, those inter kingdom fight or the fights that are going on, those wars and 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 disagreements that people have, they pretty much got to go away when you're doing kingdom versus kingdom kill events, um, alliance kill events. You know, those are fair game. Have fun if your kingdom's still in that in that phase. Just have fun with it. Same thing with just free for all kill events. You know, my recommendation if you're still building, shield up. Um, one quick thing I was going to mention is I'm not going to go too long in this video, but the purge. A lot of kingdoms will purge their kingdom before a kill event starts. Now, basically, what that means is they're going to go around and in all the lower players, they're going to zero them out, or the weaker players that are unshielded. And the uh, <clears throat> and another thing is is uh, they're going to zero out. I mean, they're going to kill out any tiles. Anybody that's farming on a tile unshielded, you're you're going to lose your troops. So my recommendation is, you know, 12 hours before a kingdom, uh, even 24 hours before a KVK, uh, kingdom versus kingdom kill event starts, um, pull your troops off of a tile or shield. Uh, use a resource shield, you know. Because you're going to lose your troops one way or another. Either you pull them off and you're not going to lose them. Or you shield, you're not going to lose them. But if you leave them on there to farm that without a shield, you're going to lose your troops. And there should be no bitching or complaining about it in Kingdom Chat because it's your fault. You knew a Kingdom versus Kingdom event was coming. That's the way it is. Now, I don't... As far as when you're purging, it's, it's not really a good idea to go and zero out people that are Stronghold level 14 or lower. Even if they're unshielded. Because if they have... T1 and T2 troops, maybe T3 at best. Um, a, a lot of times you're going to have these players from other kingdoms that are 100 to 200, maybe 300 million power, and they're going to go and they're going to see these people and they're just going to start attacking them, sending T4 troops because they probably just got them. And they're actually going to lose power. We're going to, uh, your kingdom is going to win in power. So I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't zero those particular, uh, those particular people out now the people I would zero out if you have people in your kingdom which we have a few in ours that they want to rally people just because they can rally people but they really have no clue what they're doing um, those are the people you want to zero out because they're gonna be the ones feeding the enemy um, points so you know really is it's just use some basic law logic when when you're when you're doing a kill event um, it's it's just a simple simple rule of, all right. If I'm sending this amount of troops, and I kill this amount of troops, who wins in power? You know, it's just it's just it's simple. Um, and 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 watch for traps in kill events. You know, your kingdom needs to be posting in kingdom chat, or you know, make another chat. I'm not going to share that chat, but um, make another chat. Uh, you know, for your kingdom to make callouts of traps like, hey, these are trap accounts. Don't attack them. You know, and be detailed as you can on it. If you happen to get a scout off on somebody, share that information. Tell people what troops they have, what, you know, all the counts, you know, of what type. You know, you don't have to be specific to they have this many of this, this many of this. Just state that they have this many strategic tier four, this many strategic tier three. And, and, and it really helps. Call out the names call out coordinates um, and and call out traps like actual traps not not necessarily trap accounts but I'm saying like they have you know what their trap counts are are they running all iron bricks are they running t4 uh, traps um, about that's that's really that, that's kind of a basic rule of thumb just use common sense when you're in a, in a kingdom versus kingdom kill event don't let pride get in the way if you know the biggest thing is I can always recommend is is shield you know shields are your friend it don't matter I mean we have a player in our kingdom um, he's a leader of of one of the top alliances on our kingdom uh, he's a leader of uh, H, uh, H, well, HJ and and uh, and I saw him shielded for the first time in this last KVK and you know that's be he there's no point he wasn't holding any heroes why not shield you know prevents him from getting zeroed overnight um, you know, he's sitting at 20 billion power, I believe. But even people that high can be zeroed. I mean, and you don't want, again, it's all boils down to giving the other kingdom less, the, the minimal amount of points. And honestly, if you, 
if you want to win a kingdom versus kingdom kill event every time, your kingdom would never initiate an attack at all. Let them attack you because you're always going to win pretty much with points if you're defending with the troops in your base or in your city. And if they start killing off all your meat, then that's when you pop your shield so they can't start killing T4s and getting those points back. So they just lost everything. Um, same thing go with... Uh, with uh, The only time you really should attack is if you're in a, in, involved in wonder fights. And that's really just attack the wonder and then defend it. It's, it's simple. Um... But yeah, I'm going to go ahead and end this one. Uh, try not to let these videos get too long. I'll, uh, you know, get some more information about kill events if, as I get it. I'll make sure I upload it and share it. But again, thanks to, you know, to Tails and Casey and Queen Bee and InsideGameAward.com for uh, helping out get some of this information together as far as, you know, counts. And, and there's a lot of really good information on Inside Game of War. Uh, there's actually a lot of information about... Uh, kill events and the points there there's a lot of test scenarios in there too and I really think that that it'll help uh, anybody really it doesn't matter how experienced you are and as far as uh, video content there's not really a lot of video in this I, you know I'm gonna do some recording of the uh, upcoming the next uh, KVK that we have and I'll make sure I get that uploaded and share it but again if you any other information that you guys want or you know, you'd like to uh, like to have. Just feel free to leave me some comments, and uh, and uh, and I'll definitely try to get that up there. And subscribe. You'll see when I post new videos. Y'all have a good night. I'll see y'all a couple of days.